So this is problem number two from the 2011 BC exam. This was form B of the exam. And this is a calculator question that involved polar curves. And they give us the polar curve defined by this equation here. Uh, and they tell us that our value of theta is supposed to range from 0 to 2 pi. And since this is a calculator question, if you change your graphing calculator to polar mode, you can toss this equation in and you'll get a graph that, that looks like the beginning of the spiral that you see here. Uh, what we're asked to do in part A is we're asked to find the area that's enclosed by the curve and the x-axis located in the second quadrant. So we wanted to find the area, this region right here. And so what you're going to do when you're trying to find the area enclosed by a polar curve is you're actually going to use the area of, the, of a sector of a circle, which would be one little slice of a circle. So what I did was I kind of took a slice of the region and I kind of isolated it off on the side here. And I said, well, the, the radius of this, it's not a perfect circle right there because the radius is changing given that it depends on the angle theta. But the, the radius is given by this equation or this expression. And so the r value is going to be 3 theta plus sine of theta. The area of this one sliver of the reason, region, this one sector of the region, is going to be 1 half r squared times the angle that we're dealing with from out of the, the full circle. And in this case, it's some tiny, tiny difference in theta right here. So I called that delta theta. If I want to find the area of a bunch of these sectors summed together, I'm going to let the definition of the definite integral do all of that work for me. And I'm going to integrate this expression. And when I integrate this expression, the delta theta becomes a d theta, telling me my variable of integration. Uh, this just comes straight down. And then I need to know what angles all of my slices that are present within this region range between. Well, the angle right here would be pi by 2. So my lower limit of integration, my lowest value of theta is pi by 2. My largest value of theta is pi. This is a calculator question. So I tossed that expression into the calculator. And I rounded that to three digits of accuracy. And I, I like to kind of check the validity of these whenever possible. And what I have right here across my x-axis is I'm going backward negative 10 units and I'm going upward negative 10 uh, positive 10 units. So what I thought was, you know, the area of the second quadrant that I'm seeing right here is 10 times 10 or 100 square units. And it, it seems like, yeah, I do have, you know, just about half of that area accounted for for what's shaded in blue right here. So this definitely does seem valid and we're ready to go ahead and move on to part B. So in part B, they tell us that in between pi by 2 and pi, so in that second quadrant, there's a point on our curve that has an x-coordinate of negative 3. We want to find the angle theta where this occurs, and then we want to find what the y-coordinate of that point is. So you can kind of look at the graph and, and recognize that, yeah, there's a point right here on the graph where the x-coordinate is negative 3. Now, we don't, we don't know what this angle theta is that we have to open up by to get from the x-axis around our curve to that point. So we're going to have to find that angle theta. That's the first thing that we're asked to find. So there's a, a formula that you probably have seen in a calculus textbook. This is a way that you can relate x, r, and theta. You don't necessarily have to memorize this. If you just draw a little triangle in your first quadrant, uh, the angle theta is going to be here. This is going to be the radius of your polar curve. This would be the y-coordinate of the point that sits right here. And then uh, across the bottom, that would be the x-coordinate of the point that sits right here. And so you can just do a little bit of SOHCAHTOA to determine that the relationship between x, r, and theta is that x over r is going to be cosine of theta. And then if you solve that for x, you get this. So this is the relationship between x, r, and theta. Now the, the issue with this right here is that it depends on three variables. We have a number that we want to put in place of x. So eventually a negative 3 is going to go here. But then we still have an r and a theta there. We would like this to only depend on one variable. And there's an easy way to get this to depend on one variable. You know a relationship between r and theta. This point is on the curve defined by this equation. So the relationship between r and theta is that r is going to equal 3 theta sine of theta. So I replaced r with 3 theta sine of theta. I then did what I said a minute ago, and that's put negative 3 in place of x. I want to know what value of theta satisfies this equation. Well, this is a calculator question, so you, so you shouldn't waste your time trying to solve this by hand. 
Uh, so what I did, and I, I had to do this in, in function mode, so you see another graph off on the right here. I changed the mode on my calculator back to function mode. I graphed y equals negative 3, so that's what you see right here. Uh, I graphed this ugly side of the equation, and that's this crazy looking wave right here. And I then found this intersection point, and I just needed to confirm that this intersection right here was in fact between I think it was pi by 2 and pi, right? Yeah, we had to have an answer that was between pi by 2 and pi. And so pi by 2 is 1.5, pi is 3.14. So yeah, this value right here, although it says x because I had to change to function mode, that's really my value of theta, uh, the value of the variable sitting in these positions that would make this uh, statement true. And so my value of theta is here. I don't want to round this to three digits of accuracy just yet because I'm actually going to do more work with that value in order to find the y coordinate. So I took all the accuracy that the calculator provided me with. Uh, my, my value of theta is this when x equals negative 3. If I want to find the y coordinate, I have to kind of do the same thing that I started with back here. I need to develop a relationship between not x r and theta, but y r and theta. So using the same diagram, you can relate y r and theta with the sine function, and that's going to give you y over r equals sine of theta. Well, if you want to solve that for y, just multiply by r. Issues the same one we talked about earlier. This depends on r and theta. Make it depend only on theta. So you can go ahead and you can put 3 sine of theta, the, the equation of our polar curve in place of r, and then you want to evaluate this at the value of theta right here, because this value of theta makes x negative 3, so the same value of theta tossed in place of the thetas in this expression will give us the y coordinate right here that's currently missing. And so what I did, and, and I, I wanted to you know, put this big ugly decimal here, here, and here. So I didn't screenshot this, but what I did whenever I, I developed this result is I actually typed this into the calculator, 3 theta plus sine of theta in a set of parentheses times sine of theta. I stored this big ugly result as theta, evaluated this expression, and then I rounded my answer for the y coordinate to three digits of accuracy. And if you think about it, that should make sense. You know, we're, we're going up to positive 10 here, and we're a little bit more than halfway up from the x-axis at this point there. So yeah, 6.2 uh, makes sense. And that's part B, and we'll discuss part C to wrap this up. And in part C, they tell us that there's a particle that's traveling along this polar curve, and its position at time t is x of t, y of t, such that d theta dt is constantly going to have a value of 2. We want to find dy dt at the instant when theta equals 2 pi by 3, and then try to interpret that as far as the motion of this object is concerned. So what I recognized was back in part B, we had this relationship between y, r, and theta, right? y was equal to r sine of theta. And if we wanted to make that a relationship just between y and theta, we could replace r with what r equals on this particular polar curve. So I went ahead and I did that. And then I noticed that I wanted to find dy dt. So if I have this equation right here, taking the derivative of the left side with respect to t generates a dy dt. But I'm also going to have to keep this equation balanced and do the derivative on the right-hand side of the equation with respect to t as well. So the derivative on this side of the equation with respect to t is, is kind of messy, but as long as you're careful, it's, it's really just implicit differentiation. Uh, we want to do the derivative of 3 theta. So the derivative of 3 theta would be 3, but theta is actually a function of t. So I'm going to multiply by the derivative of this inner function, right? Theta changes over time. So d theta dt is 2. I'm eventually going to put a 2 in place of this, but by implicit differentiation, the derivative of this term is going to be the derivative of the outer function, 3 theta to the 0, or just 3, and then times the derivative of the inner function, times d theta dt. Similarly, the derivative of this piece is going to be cosine of theta, but theta is a function of t, so I have to multiply by the derivative of theta with respect to t to finish off that chain rule or to do that implicit differentiation. Now that would be the derivative of what's in the set of parentheses here. I'm going to have to multiply by this 
original second piece of the function because I need to use a product rule to take this derivative. Uh, and then the second piece of my product rule is going to be the original quantity that you see here and then times the derivative of sine of theta. And so theta is a function of t, so the derivative of the outer function is cosine. We leave theta inside. We multiply by the derivative of the inner function. And it was kind of messy, but we got the derivative of that right-hand side. We want to evaluate that at the theta value of 2 pi by 3. So we put 2 pi by 3 in place of all of our thetas. We know that d theta dt is 2, so anytime you see a d theta dt occurring back here, you're going to see a 2 in, in this line that's written out right here. Uh, then you could carefully evaluate this on the calculator and you get negative 2.386. Uh, that would be the value of dy dt when theta equals 2 pi by 3. What does this mean in terms of the motion of the object? Well, since this is negative and it's the rate of change of y with respect to time, we know that the y coordinate of the object is decreasing because of the negative here at a rate of 2.386 units of distance per unit of time.